congratulations on taking the first step towards what will likely be a light bulb experience, an experience that will reinvigorate your teaching career. Inquiry learning can facilitate superior cognitive and effective outcomes, as well as provide an excellent mechanism for teaching key aspects of the nature of science. And this seminar is designed to help you implement it soundly. Are you confused by the use of terminology in scientific investigations? Terms like hypothesis, prediction and conclusion? Take a hypothesis for example. Which of these do you think are acceptable descriptions of a hypothesis? There may be more than one. Is a hypothesis a sentence describing what you think your experiment should demonstrate? A prediction with an explanation. Perhaps a prediction of the effect that changes in the independent variable will have on the dependent variable. A statement about data expectations. A statement that leads to one or more predictions. Or a part of all scientific investigations. Are you surprised to find that only one of these descriptions stands up to scrutiny? Inquiry learning involves investigations, which are not to be confused with hands-on experiments. In part one of this seminar, we will clarify the terminology associated with scientific investigations, such as law, hypothesis, theory, embedded theory, prediction and conclusion. Define what is meant by an inquiry learning experience in science. Consider the distinguishing features of science and define the term as a basis for distinguishing between scientific and non-scientific claims and explanations. Distinguish descriptive and causal investigative questions and understand why and how they need to be answered differently. Answer the question, is there such a thing as the scientific method or process? And understand why there is so much erroneous writing on this issue. Understand why too much attention is being given to the investigation of descriptive questions at the expense of causal questions. Indeed, many students are never provided the opportunity to answer a causal question by investigation. Yet this process is critical to the development of an understanding of the nature of science. And appreciate why reports of descriptive and causal investigations require different headings why a hypothesis is not needed in every student investigation, and why some investigative reports require a summary of results only, while others require a conclusion. Consider this investigation, which parallels an activity found in a contemporary curriculum document. Assuming the experimental methodology that was employed is fine, what shortcomings do you see in the pedagogical approach that is adopted? The aim of the investigation was to determine if the quantity of water affects seed germination. Students were asked to research the factors affecting the germination of bean seeds plus the associated explanations. They hypothesised that germination will be better under moist conditions than when seeds are dry or fully immersed. The students then designed an experimental methodology that comprised seeds on dry filter paper, seeds on moist filter paper, and seeds fully immersed in water. The experiment was conducted and results collected. In the discussion, students said that their results agree with their hypothesis and they concluded that germination will be better under moist conditions than when seeds are dry or fully immersed. This is a very poorly conceived investigation and report. There are problems associated with five of the seven steps and this includes the misuse of terminology. This seminar addresses these issues. In part two of the seminar, we will consider the different levels of inquiry, sources of confusion about inquiry learning, and the shortcomings of unguided inquiry. Address misconceptions associated with open inquiry. Overview the different types of 7E learning cycle, descriptive, empirical abductive, and hypothetical predictive, and see how inquiry can be employed in different time period contexts, 
from a single activity through a segment of work within a unit to an extended project. The content of this seminar is firmly grounded in the contemporary research literature and represents the latest and best understandings in the field. Included in the seminar package is a narrated PowerPoint slideshow, further written materials that comprise a concept map, glossary, ideas for implementing a 7 e learning cycle, inquiry classroom management checklist, categories of assessment instruments, classroom participation rubric for peer assessment, and advice for designing a performance task rubric. And papers for further reading that elaborate on the content of the slideshow presentation. In addition, email and phone support, which includes me phoning you in Australia or other selected countries, is offered at no additional cost. This seminar is being very well received around the globe. As Gary Simpson, Head of Science Faculty at Woodley School, Victoria, Australia said, The paper titled Understanding Hypotheses, Predictions, Theories and Laws, written by Peter Eastwell, should be read widely and the whole debate of what constitutes a hypothesis, a prediction, a theory and a law in science needs to take much more central place in science education training and science courses in general. We enjoy Peter's visits every year. It's really worthwhile having him come by. Thanks, Peter. For further information about the presenter, please visit www.sciencetime.com.au. Pricing for this professional learning package begins at 150 Australian dollars for personal payment by an individual and institutional pricing varies with school size. Alternatively, please contact me to arrange an in-person seminar, which is typically of two hours duration, or a longer workshop at your location. Please note our seven day money back guarantee. To express your interest in this seminar and receive your free introductory paper titled The Scientific Method, Critical Yet Misunderstood, and or to seek further information, please email me. To purchase the course, email me to request a tax invoice. Following payment, you will receive prompt access to the seminar materials. Proceeding with this seminar, either yourself or as a staff, could not be simpler. To ensure you are using terminology correctly as you tweak your students' classroom experiences with inquiry, turning dull activities into highly engaging investigations, please act now. Professional learning just couldn't be any more convenient.